a very good afternoon to all of you and welcome to the session of mission 10x today uh, we are going to discuss a very interesting topic as well as which is highly relevant to our classrooms called as analogies and i would like to start with a warm up exercise so request all the coordinators to help as usual and let it be very interactive i need some help in filling the blanks can you help me complete this sentence as hammer is to carpenter dash is to painter let us see who is going to be the first brush that is kj somaya mumbai is the first and though everybody has got it right thank you all move on to the next as dash is to humans carbon dioxide is to the plants let's see again now who is going to be the first oxygen yeah indoor mp is the first one and they have been enhancing their speed by making it symbolic o2 thank you the third one as sun is to dash so is dash to an atom we have two to fill yes sun is to shrine sun is to solar and nucleus i think anna university chennai gets it first as sun is to the solar system so is the nucleus to an atom thank you for that response and what we have just seen happens to be an illustration of an analogy typically there is a situation or a concept a and there is another situation or a concept b and there is a similarity in some respects from the concept a to the concept b as we saw in the first case we saw as hammer is to carpenter brush is to the painter so the situation first happens to be the hammer with respect to the carpenter and the second situation is the brush with respect to the painter and the similarity happens to be that hammer is a tool for the carpenter just as brush is a tool for the painter this is typically when we say an analogous situation between a and b and traditionally analogy has been used several con several contexts as well as several methods and interestingly today what we are going to concentrate is on how analogy helps in simplifying complex information and we will also see how significant analogy can be as a learning tool and most interestingly we will also integrate it to the multiple intelligences prevalent in our learners which was discussed widely day before yesterday and of course we look at analogies relevant to the subject of the computer programming which is the current context for us as i said we have been having using analogies over the years typically in several situations and the best would be for me to start with our own workshop and thanks to professor fatak who has been continuously using it in the course of his delivery of the content yesterday and day before i have a very good example to show and let us all watch this visualization now and then we will come back for the discussion on it
what we saw just now was a repetition of what Professor Fatak used in one of his lectures day before and we find that there are several analogies imbibed into this particular animation and typically as we discussed analogy is similarity in some respects between things that are otherwise dissimilar and how we are transiting from a known familiar simple concept to an unknown abstract and a new concept and the familiar and simple and known concept or the situation is termed as the source and the unknown or the abstract or the new concept to be learnt is called as the target. I request all of you to discuss among yourself in the visualization shown what are the sources and the targets and which are the corresponding analogies and we will have an interactive question and answer for the same. The first one is choose the right pair of source target for an analogy from the given combinations. Is it the memory location and the drawer? The drawer and the numbers in the drawer? Vellur says it is number 1. Nirma Ahmedabad gets it right. It is number 3. Thank you Nirma. Anyone else? Yes, Sindur is also right behind with 3. Thank you for that. And so we have the first analogy from the visualization. Yeah, lots of them with 3. That is very nice. Thank you. And so we see that the visualization typically illustrated an analogy where the source happens to be the drawer which is very familiar and known to us and the target happens to be the memory location which is being studied in the concept of computer programming. And what exactly is the similarity or the relation between them? This is again a question for you all. The relation between the above source and the target that is drawer and the memory location is dash. There is also a hint that is unjumble the given word. Yes, Simagat Pune is the first to say it is storage. So, thank you NIT Suratkal, Indur and Nanded and Maharashtra. Everybody is following it. Thanks for that answer. So, in this first analogy that is taken out of this visualization, the source happens to be the drawer which is connected, related to the target of memory location and the relation happens to be both of them are used for storage. The next one, get ready for another set of source target pair from the same visualization. Choose which of the following is the right combination. Memory address and Mr. Dumbo, Mr. Dumbo and the drawer name, drawer name and memory address, Mr. Dumbo and memory address. Yes, Trishur is first now with three. All of them followed Indore, Chennai, Amruta, Kambatur and Pune, Maharashtra. Thank you. So, all of you have got it right. The drawer name and the memory address is another analogy where the source happens to be the drawer name which is familiar to us. The drawer is named as ABC and just as the source is named in some fashion, the memory locations are also named with a particular address. So that is the analogy, second one found in the visualization and the identification the rela relation between the above source and the target is dash complete the word given in the slide. Yes, VNIT Nagpur is first with identification. The relation between the source and the target here happens to be identification. Yes, of course, everybody has got it right. Thank you. We will move on. The third one is in the same visualization. For the source Mr. Dumbo, what is the target? Drawer, memory location, number, computer. I think KJ Somaya gets it first. Mumbai, fourth is the option. 
Mr. Dumbo is the source and the target happens to be the computer. Another question related to the same. In the above, the relation between the above source and target is dash and the hint here is. Another analogy is the hint as brain is to humans, dash is to computers. CPU, yes, can you expand? I saw somebody giving the answer, MGM. KCES Jalgan has first replied saying CPU. Processor MGM Engineering Nanded is the processor. So what I was looking for, what processor, though CPU also is the same. Thank you. And so we get the answer for this particular analogy where Mr. Dumbo happens to be the source, the target is the computer and the relation happens to be the both of them can process. So the processor, right? What was interesting in this simulation happens to be that we had all these multiple analogies built into this visualization. The first one was a drawer being analogous to memory location and the similarity highlighted is that both of them can store something. The second one is the drawer name is analogous to memory address and both of them are required for identification and Mr. Dumbo to the computer and both of them can process, right? So as you see, I'm sure you can also find some more analogies, but these were the ones highlighted. However, interestingly, there are also dissimilarities which are to be noted. The first one is one memory location can hold only one data. However, in the physical drawer, more than one item can be stored. This happens to be a dissimilarity. Similarly, one more important dissimilarity happens to be that in a physical drawer, when a, the content is taken out, the drawer turns to be empty. Whereas in a memory location, even when the data is taken out, only a copy is taken out and the data still is retained in the memory location, which was shown very explicitly in the visualization. So, what it means is, what are our checklists while preparing an analogy? Suppose we want to build a similar analogy. The starting point for us is, is the concept to be taught simple or complex? This is the first question to be asked because analogy works best when what is to be taught is complex and in this case the concept of memory location as Professor Fatak has been explaining in several ways, several of the concepts are abstract and are complex to the learners when they enter our course. So it is important that we choose a complex topic that is to be taught and then have I chosen a situation which is familiar and known to the learner. Most important because in any analogy we have a source and we have a target and the source is the familiar and the known situation to the learner and we need to ensure or think whether the learner is actually familiar or not. And in the previous visualization the source chosen most of the time was the set of drawers which is most familiar. That is an example. And does the principle or principles to be taught emerges from the similarities map between the source and the target? So which are the principles that are to be conveyed, that are to be taught and are they relating to the relation highlighted as similarity between the source and the target? Like the previous visualization, we had the set of drawers and the set of memory locations. Two main similarities pointed out that both are used for storage and both are named, identified with respect to a name. These are the principles to be taught with respect to a memory location and that is how they emerged from the similarities mapped. And how will I address the possible misconceptions that are likely to arise from the analogy to be used? For example, 
if the previous visualization had stopped with the demonstration of the same and the possible misconceptions which were highlighted in the previous slide were not discussed that can lead to a misconception that whenever data is taken out from a memory location even the location probably will be empty. So, whenever we look at the analogy it is highly important that we address the possible misconceptions that are likely to arise and I am sure you will all remember Professor Fatak's lecture last two days in the same and many places he has constantly been referring to what is similar and what is also dissimilar between the source and the target. And finally, how will I verify that my learners have understood the concept taught through the use of analogy? It is always important to re-ascertain that what has been conveyed is what has been understood. So, have I thought of a way to verify whether what principles were meant to be conveyed has been learnt. These are our checklist while preparing a analogy. And now comes another interesting thing with respect to the analogy. Looking back the previous day before session of Mission 10X, we discussed about what are called multiple intelligences which are highly relevant in the context of effective teaching learning process. And now let us look at analogy and the different multiple intelligences. What is very interesting is analogy has inherently three of the multiple intelligences that was spoken. The first one is linguistic and the second is logical and the third is intrapersonal. The linguistic most of the time analogy is stated traditionally also and several times when we state the analogy and we map the similarity that is where the linguistic intelligences are addressed. And logical of course because there is a reasoning between the similarities of the source to the similarities of the target and what is highly important and relevant is analogies are built and many times they are built in layers which is what happened over the last two days even with Professor Fatak's lecture what we saw he introduced Mr. Dumbo and Mr. Dumbo and his for example the functioning with respect to adding two numbers and with several other concepts of introducing memory and he also introduced his assistants junior Dumbos. So, the analogy was built in several layers and hence the logic corresponding logic also goes on building. And as and when we clarify the misconceptions also, there is several logical reasoning that happens and hence analogy gives you a ready platform to exploit this linguistic uh, and uh, logical intelligences. And of course, it is intrapersonal when you involve the learner with this kind of a methodology. And what is much more important is also that we can also design our analogy to tap as well as imbibe the different multiple intelligences like visual, kinesthetic, interpersonal and musical which are the other intelligences that we discussed day before yesterday. We have the evidence with us that by design how visual intelligence was tapped again referring to the same Professor Fatak's uh, technique of using this previously displayed animation with respect to addition of two numbers and you might also remember that over the lectures he several times he also used several pictures. So, using such pictures as well as animation which could also have been explained orally gives us an opportunity to tap as well as imbibe visual intelligence. And suppose the same analogy is demonstrated in a classroom by involving the learners. As a thought, the same thing could have been demonstrated instead of showing a simu simulation, asking each of the learners to get a 
box and then getting some kind of material which are put into the box and the same addition of two numbers by the processor and the concepts with respect to the memory location could have been taught using the demonstration using the boxes and the contents of the boxes and particular learners or the teacher together demonstrating the whole process of picking some contents from one location and from another location and then adding and then putting the result into the third location. This kind of an activity would have demonstrated a kinesthetic intelligence. Similarly, designing and looking at analogies which are involving the learners in typically any kind of group work will address and imbibe what are called interpersonal intelligences. Of course, the teacher can be innovative to introduce musical intelligence as also a part of the analogy. All in all, what we see that many new insights are generated by learning something from the structure or behavior of one entity which is very well understood about another entity of which we have less knowledge, which exactly is the principle of anal analogy and hence that is what has been being used over the years and it can be used to provide explanations as well as solve problems and most importantly in today's era computer based simulations and animations give instructors the ability to bring in classroom analogies which were very difficult or impossible to use before. And a properly selected analogy through innovation can tap or imbibe several of the multiple intelligences that were discussed and which definitely would enhance the learning. Thank you and for all your cooperation and the response.